Right, hello everybody and welcome once again to one of my live feeds here on YouTube. Hello, so nice to have you on board. Well, thank you very much for watching. Now today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this otter. I've already, got a, I've already worked on the water as you can see. I'm going to start working on the face and probably painting the eyes as well at the same time. Um, so what, throughout this video, we're going to go through all that process and painting both those two little eyes there. And we'll see how far we get within the next kind of half an hour, 45 minutes or so and uh, see how far we get with the painting. So stay tuned and uh, let's relax and enjoy. And let's do some watercolor painting together. Okay, right, here we go. So I'm just gonna finish off some of this water effect for this art. I'm gonna look at the photograph I've got in front of me now. And there's a lot of detail. There's a bit of a water splash coming down here. Now, what I tend to use is watercolor white quite a lot. And when you look at my palette here, so I've got it inside there, look, so it's watercolor white, and the one I use is one from SAA, but there's a, a variety of watercolor whites on the market. This particular one is opaque, so that's what you want to look for when you buy a white paint, so make sure it's opaque. All right, so you can do that if you want to, it's not a problem at all. Um, but if you buy something that's semi-transparent, you'll find it doesn't tend to cover, not quite as much anyway, you'll find that. I'm not quite happy with just this one little area down on the bottom of this water here. So I'm going to pull off a little bit of paint just by using a, a damp clean brush. Just a little bit there and a bit of a V really when you look at the photograph. I can just see it. Just push that brush out. So just using the lifting off technique, just take off a little bit of water there to create a bit more of a ripple, which is what I wanted there. And probably a little bit more there as well, so it kind of hooks up and lift it. And you can see from this tissue here, I've got other ones here as well. These are the ones I've just lifted off, so that gives some general idea how that works. Just a little bit more there. So for today, while I'm kind of sat here painting away, for what why not go live? So you can stop and say hello. If you've got any questions you want to ask, and please do so. I'm here to. Do what I can for you once you've got me live online. And if you're watching this on catch up, don't worry, please put a comment down below. And I will obviously yeah, answer your question for you because I do get notifications from YouTube. Just trying to pick out where some of these details go down the bottom here as well. I want to make sure that everything's all in line and where it should be before I start working on the face really. A little bit more down there. Yeah, that's not too bad. So you can see what I've done with the water here. So basically what I've done to begin with, I've used masking fluid, which is this particular one here. Okay, it's a blue colored one, which I tend to use. And I masked off the inside of the otter, probably about a quarter of an inch, something like that, all the way around. Okay, so I've done that first of all. Once that's masked off, obviously after doing the drawing out stage, then I'll the watercolor background just by starting from the top wetting down the background first of all then working with a variety of colors so when you're looking at something like this here look so i've got Payne's gray cerulean blue burnt umber and they're the main colors which i've used for the background i try not to add too many colors in for the main kind of blurry part of the background really and when you're working on water such as this you're working with different layers and the layers are very pale as well so you've got to work from one pale layer to another to another. And every pale layer that we add on, you could gradually get darker and deeper in tone as you work through that. And that's how I tend to work on the water. Especially when you get further, it's probably about halfway down. Well, yeah, about a third of the way, more or less than halfway. All the way down, it gets more detailed as it comes more towards the last quarter of the front of the painting. So that's how that's worked out. Okay, now then. Let's start working on the eyes. I'm going to zoom into my reference photograph in front of me. I mean, I've got it on a tablet. And I think what we'll do, probably work on the right hand eye first. I've already got some burnt umber and a little bit of um, French ultramarine mixed in with that as well. And I've also got just a tiny amount of burnt sienna in there at the same time. So the first thing I need to do is very lightly, very lightly, Start mapping out where the eye is. I can see my pencil marks, obviously. 
but this this is a stage where you really got to be careful and just make sure that you just do it carefully and slowly don't rush your painting especially when you're working on eyes as well just take your time with this work out where that reflection is I can just see it on the reference photo there just pick it out and there is another ring to this eye ring so we've got another one just probably just on the inside here now this brush is getting a bit old now so it's starting to wear just a little bit and just around the top of the eye now we've got a bit of a shadow as well so where the eyebrow comes down the shadow is across probably I'm trying to see where that goes there just do the main back of the eye ring first just that area there now my eyes I'm seeing I'm painting eyes my eyes are flicking backward and forward backward and forward all the time to that reference photo just so I can make out I kind of keep in my mind's eye really where all the details go it's a little bit more there and trying to see where that goes down there I see that's about at that area there so that's mapped out ready to go so I'm going to do the same with the other eye now as well so I've got that so I can map that one out but something else I need to do before we start painting the eyes properly so let's just work on the second eye so the left eye as we look at it which is slightly hidden only slightly though probably to about a bit of a gap probably about there and barely touching this paper as I mentioned if you've got any questions you want to ask them please do so just while you got me live and I'll do my best to answer them for you just probably down to about there we've got a lower eye ring there this is quite dark as well so all this area up here is quite dark above the eye and just down the side there as well now the highlight is that part there. there's also a faint highlight on this side so not quite as bright as all this area here so I'm just going to very lightly with hardly any paint on the brush so two airs and air okay just very lightly just kind of touch that in to about there that's it that'll do right now to map everything out now for that I'm going to use a weaker mix of the same color so you can just see the burnt sienna there look so I'm going to mix all this together and I want this quite watery really to be honest with you and I'm going to go over all the pencil lines all the internal pencil lines that I can see just make sure there's no water runs on that brush lot do you know what will happen with that? It could run on, drip onto your painting, which you don't want it to do. I've done that many times. I still do it now after 40 plus years of painting, and even now I still miss that drip of water at the end of the brush there. Okay. So I'll start working out where things are properly. So I've got the pencil marks there, as you can see, but the thing is, the pencil marks might not be spot on. So this is where. When I'm looking at the nostril shape, for example, they are a bit of an oval, as you can see, on its side, slightly on its side. So it's kind of going that direction. That's its axis in that way there, look. And the same for the opposite one, nearly the same as that one on that side, for the opposite direction. And that's how that works. So it's a matter of looking at the shapes and the sizes. So just very lightly going over the pencil marks. Now people say, what are you doing that for, Paul? Why are you going over your pencil marks for? I don't know, really. I've got no idea. Now the reason why I tend to do this is because when I put the washes of colour over the top, the foundation washes, which you do up, anybody that's on my Patreon group or my Patreon channel, have a look at the inf information above. Uh, send the link down below as well. Um, anybody on there knows the way I tend to paint, and I like to kind of map things out and then seal the, um, the paper in a little bit so when we add the watercolor washes over the top the foundation washes just kind of weak light tones really some of this will stay put most of it should should stay put but you know not always 
but it just kind of helps you kind of maintain or keep them pencil lines there kind of seals them in in a way and that's what I tend to do and that way you haven't got to kind of try and redraw and rework out where things go which is a bit of a pain isn't it sometimes it really can be okay we got on there um Walla, Walla Stamping, hello Walla Stamping, how are you today? Thank you very much for coming on board. How long does it normally take you to finish a painting like this? Yeah, um, if I work on this when I'm not video videoing for Patreon, I tend to probably take maybe a couple of days, something to this degree. Day and a half, two days, and that's a full day painting. It's like an eight hour day, something like that. Um, if I sit and just relax with the radio on, I'm not doing any video and as I say changing batteries or anything like that then yeah maybe about one and a half days when I'm doing it as a video which I'll say this one isn't not so this one's on just for going live here on YouTube and um, then probably it could take me when I'm when I'm just doing it as a video um, so one and a half days for that but probably about three to four days for patreon for paying something very similar to this okay just a few more around there pick out these little details now when I'm adding these little details in even though I'm going to put the watercolor washes over the top of this I want to know the direction that these go in so I tend to akin this to like a clock face okay so think about it you see what I mean in a minute I'm not going daft <laughs> what I mean by that I'm gen at the moment my direction the brush strokes if I just get a piece of test paper a minute my brush directions there it's probably between 10 o'clock and would you say five o'clock something like that direction so that's 10 o'clock five o'clock on a clock face then you've got 11 o'clock to probably that's probably 11 o'clock to five o'clock so i see 10 o'clock to probably four o'clock that's probably sounds better to me yeah 10 till 4 11 till 5 12 till 6 when it's going vertical so if you work on a clock face idea and get that in your head when you're starting to work on detail or even working on directions it will help you keep in kind of in a line where things are going to go and that's how I tend to work I work that all the time when I'm working on feathers and fur um, just kind of look at the direction that the lines go in so that's going that way there a little bit more on the top okay what else we got so we got the ones in the ear now I tend not to outline anything around the outside edge, so I won't go around the edges around here like so, because if I do that, that'll end up looking like a cartoon picture, you know, because obviously when you start adding the detail over the top, then you'll find you've got this hard edge, and I don't want it looking too cartoony because of that, so you've got to be quite careful with that, so just overlay, just map out, overlay, seal in the pencil marks that you've got on the inside. Now you don't want the pencil to be too dark, so make sure it's nice and light. So when you first draw it out, just get a putty, putty eraser, something like this one here, look. Just a nice kind of malleable putty eraser, and then use that to dab off, don't rub with it, just dab off some of the pencil, a little bit, just to lighten it down, just that tiny, you know, that little bit more really, so it's not too dark. Because bearing in mind, you're going to be sealing that pencil in that little bit. So working down now towards the mouth. Even though I'm going over my reference marks I've got on there, I'm still very careful looking at this photograph because <laughs> there's always a good chance that I've got the lines in the wrong place. And I drew this out the other day. And because of it's not today's drawing, I've come back with fresh eyes. And when you come back to a painting with fresh eyes, you tend to see things in a different light sometimes. You just tend to spot your mistakes. Or little kind of happy accidents, that kind of thing, you know. So it's well worth stepping away from a painting. And then just coming back, even if it's five minutes later, after making yourself a cup of coffee or something like that, and have fresh eyes on the painting. Now, the teeth, are, well, they are quite whitey yellow colour, aren't they? But I'm just going to still outline... And the reason why is because it's quite dark behind there. We've got a very dark black mouth inside there, haven't we? So I'm going to make sure we've got that kind of outlined and sealed in just a little bit before we go any further with that. Okay, a little bit more there. 
Okay, I'm going to ask you a question now. And the question is, you ready? Say yes, Paul. The question is, where are you from? Where are you from? Where do you hail from? Quite interesting, actually, when people say they're from different parts of the world. So let me know where you're from, okay? Just put in one word, doesn't have to be a sentence. Type one word. Where are you from? Don't say the moon or anything like that. Because that's where I'm from and I don't know you from there. Okay, just a little bit more around there. And I think, no, uh, that's just about most of them. I may have missed one or two knocking about here and there, but not too worried about these on the side. Probably the ear. Just make sure we got that just kind of lightly covered. Not the outside edge, remember. Just so we know where things go. There's a little area there as well. Okay, I think that should just about do for that. Now then, eyes. Here we go. Now the first thing I want to do is get a little bit of cerulean blue, which is this one here. Just looking carefully in there. Waller Stamping, Tennessee, USA. Thank you, Waller. Uh, Serge, hello Serge. Quebec, Canada. Hello. I'm going to get some of this cerulean blue and just very lightly it might be too much there actually, but I'm just going to put a blob on there first of all. The very technical word that isn't it, blob. So go for a blob of paint just inside the eye and just very lightly just touching the edge with a clean damp brush so it just softens it down on one end. So you can see it's darker or richer, should I say, on one side, it gets lighter as it comes around. So it's a graduated wash basically is what you're doing within this little highlight area. And a little bit more around there on that one as well. You can work on both eyes together or you can work on one at a time. Now I tend to normally, when it's a larger eye, especially on a cat or a dog, is work on one eye at a time and complete each eye as I go sometimes. Sometimes I might just put the basic washes on first while you've got that colour mixed up ready to save them to kind of remix that colour if you know what I mean. But by doing so, at least then you've kind of, uh, working on one eye at a time, you can really concentrate on all the detail on that one eye. A little tip, I was going to show you today. I don't know if I've got my piece of card here, so bear with me a minute. I'm digging deep into my piece of uh, watercolour scrap papers here. So if I move the table, I do apologise. Oh, here we go. Look, so I've got all bits of paper here, look. Now, a little tip. To be able to find your way is to isolate on the photograph. I've got mine on a tablet in front of me, as I mentioned. Use a piece of card with the square cut out. And what I've done in the past, I've just very light with some kind of low tack tape. This is that washi tape. So very low tack masking tape. Very lightly tack that over the top of the photograph like this, but imagine that's a photo. Okay. And then do the same with another piece. It's a bit bigger hole on this one though. Over the painting. Now the reason why I would sometimes do that is because that really makes you concentrate and brings your eyes straight to that part of the photograph. Instead of your eye wandering around, now where was I, where was I, where was I, you know. Um, so it's quite easy, it's a much easier method than trying to find your way every time you, your eyes switch back to that reference photo. It's also a good way, if you've got a lot of detail to work on on fur or feathers, and say for example, I don't know, let's say, um, let's say a tawny owl or a barn owl or something like that, you find there's so many details, so many patterns in there, and you can really get lost within it all. Again, I would sometimes use this method just to isolate one area on the reference photograph and on the painting, just so you can keep track of exactly where you are. There's a little tip for you. There you go. I thought that might come in useful. <laughs> right, okay, now that blue is quite warm here. should nearly be dry. So I'm going to go for some brownie blue, which is that um, burnt number one. Just a little bit of that. Now the brush I'm using today, by the way, is a size double zero. Who we got on there very quickly? Uh, Gracie Shack, hello. Oh, hi, Paul. Amazing painting. How do I improve my painting? Fur skills. I struggle with fur. Hi, everyone. Gracie, ah, I'm glad you asked that question. I really am. Now, that's one thing which I will be working on for a short video, which I've been asked about on Patreon. Okay. Um, and what I intend on doing, as soon as time allows, which won't be that far away, hopefully, is working on a test sheet. So I'm going to get a, a long sheet of, of uh, watercolour paper. 
and do different blocks at different stages of the fur being built up. So you can see exactly how I do that. And I'm going to explain it all the way through as well. So I will be working on that on Patreon uh, very soon. It's something that I have got planned on doing. So just bear that one in mind. Okay, so then we're working down the side of the eye. A little bit more, so that's just the first layer. Oh, hang on, my partner Joe just bought me a nice cup of coffee. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> that's very kind of you, thank you very much. Well, she's ever so good, you know, she really is. <laughs> she's gone now. All right, okay, we can talk about her now. Thank you. Right. So a little bit on this side as well. So that's something that I do want to do, Gracie. So don't worry, that's something that I have got planned. It's on my shopping list of things to do. Yes, I have a list, um, quite a long, um, extensive list at the moment of projects I want to do for painting uh, for Patreon. Um, and that's one of them, yeah. So don't worry, that's on the agenda. So I will show you, because you know within my videos, I do go through all the different layers anyway. But I think it's quite handy if, if I've kind of isolated those layers down just so you can see exactly how I kind of put them all together. Right. So that's the first layer on within the eye. Kind of yapping away here right now. I've got to fill this area in now because this is... There was a lighter patch in there. Well, I think we'll probably pull that off later on though so just with a damp brush. Just there. And I don't want to do the lower eyelid just yet. I want this to dry off that little bit. So I'm going to go darker yet. We need to go darker, richer in colour in order to get that working. Okay, who we else have got? So we've got Maria Gleaver. Hello, Maria. How are you today? Good afternoon to you too. Gracie, thumbs up for our host. Thank you, Gracie. Oh, try. thank you, Paul. I thought I said try, Paul. I'm trying, I'm trying, Gracie. I'm trying. But yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Serge, <laughs> thank you for all the tips. <laughs> That's all right, Serge. You know I don't mind. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy doing. Um... Yeah, don't worry, um, Gracie, I've just seen your message on there. Painting fur is a real struggle for you, I know. So I understand that. And I know that people do struggle with painting fur, and you know it's something I tend to specialise in. I was going to get a little bit of lamp black. Just a little bit of that on there. Okay. I'm going to add that into my brownie blue. <laughs> Now I want this more to a creamy consistency. So more creamy than milky, than watery, than or thick. Now I tend to work on four different consistencies, as my members on Patreon know. And they tend to be, do you know what they are, don't you? Of course you know what they are. They tend to be watery, which is, you ready? Say for example this colour here, look how watery that is. So that's the kind, same kind of consistency, I can't get the words out today. Same kind of consistency that you get out of the tap, out of the, the faucet. So out of the tap, so it's really, really watery, very, very runny. Now, milky is the other one. So if I just get the burn somber there working. Now, milky, as you can see here, that's not watery. It's not running like out, the, out of the tap, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite loose. So that's milk. It's a little bit thicker than water. Creamy, however, is this one here which I've just mixed so this is creamy so it's, you know it doesn't run down the side of the palette not to much degree a little bit sticky on there so that's creamy and then the fourth one is thick so you get um, watery milky creamy thick I'd think man so watery milky creamy thick okay there you go you got that yeah of course you have okay so back to it so back to the eye and we'll see what we can do on there Yep, so as I said earlier on in, in this one as well, just make sure that you just say where you're from, because I want to know. Okay, so if you haven't already said on there, then please do. It's quite interesting to know that people are from different parts of the world. So where are you from? Now then, you can see how dark this colour is. We'll work on the details and the highlights in a bit. So it's really dark. Now I always tend to have a piece of printing paper. It's only a cheap uh, printing paper, that's all it is. Um, folded in half underneath my hand and that's because we've all got natural oils or I've been told grease on our hands which we have and because of that we tend to transfer that to the watercolour surface and I don't want to do that 
because it acts like a like a wax resist if you do that so when you try painting on an area where you've had your hand on a for a period of time it's been a little bit warm in the sun or whatever not at the moment it's not it's very cold out there then you, you find you won't be able to paint over the top of it so um, it sinks into the paper so protect your watercolor surface have something underneath I mean you can use tracing paper as an idea as well um, underneath your hand so you can see what's underneath it so you know where you are so that's an option but I just tend to use just a folded sheet of printing paper cheap and cheerful but that's just me <laughs> okay inside the eye I'm just working on just stippling at the moment that's plenty wash the brush out in the dirty and in the clean and back in again I'm going to very lightly just soften this down just on the inside now anybody watching this for the first time who is not subscribed to my channel here please do so click on the on the subscribe button below and then when you do that click on the bell icon and when you do that anything I put on here and um, when I go live or any other videos you'll be notified of them so you'll know that there's something new on there for you so please do that as a thank you so subscribe and click on the bell icon and just as a way of saying thanks and also so you can see it you don't miss anything else which I do as well okay so thank you very much if you do do that now on your marks get set okay right so what we got Marie Eastbourne hello Marie I knew you from there so I think we discussed that before didn't we some time ago so that's not quite dark enough and I'm gonna get a little bit more of that just to soften it down with a little bit more color on the side I'm gonna do the same again now just very light the stippling with the tip of this double zero brush and just the side there and then very lightly make sure there's no runs on that metal ferrule again yeah they did then you know they ran away with me just very lightly just stipple around the outside with a damp clean brush not soaking wet though because if you do it with a soaking wet brush you find it just run away with you and you're in control of this water don't let it control you and then on the inside of that one just a tiny bit more there now I did mention I can just see just a hint to the water off of a highlight within this shadowed area there so we can just see a little area there. so I'm just gonna dampen it a little bit where's my tissue gone and then get some clean tissue <clears throat> okay then very lightly lift and at least a little bit of a mark there probably too much you can just touch it back in again just where that is within there you can spend so much time working on an eye you really can but if you want to get it right just take your time on it there should never be any hurry any rush whatsoever when you're working on a painting there shouldn't be honestly it's a little bit of cerulean blue around the outside edge I want that to dry down that little bit that I can come in and start working on the small little stipple marks within this eye ring which kind of just shaping it a little bit when you think of a and let's say let's say the shape of a rope so if you've got a rope and you've got the curvature of that rope and then you've got the curves within that rope uh, the way it's been all kind of joined together the way it's been twined together then you find those little curves you'll find these kind of barely touching you can barely see them but they're in there as well and that's what I tend to look for when I'm painting an eye so I think I'll just touch that a little bit more probably there okay now then I'm going to carry on with the other one now um, yes Paul I think you visited Alfriston I did we did Joe and I did we went there for a little holiday break took us a while to drive there mind you from here from North Devon in the UK so I have to say the UK because not everybody realizes that um, yeah it took a while to drive there but it's a lovely accommodation we stayed at it really was very very nice because where we stayed this um, is it the longest or the oldest lol is it longest or oldest barn in the UK was just a few doors down the road from us I think it was stables that's what it was wasn't it okay so I'm gonna fill this one in the same process again taking my time my eyes are constant looking at the photograph I 
Do you print your photographs off or do you use an iPad, a mobile phone, a computer screen? How do you view your photographs when you're painting from them? What method do you use? Because it's quite interesting to know that as well because um, I know there's a lot of different ideas out there. Thank you Maria, it's very kind of you. There's a lot of different ideas out there which um, a lot of people adopt. You know, for years I used to print the photograph off. But the problem with printing a photograph is that you tend to find that it's never quite the same colours. You know, we know that printers tend not to always print the right colour, we know that. Uh, unless you've got it on the best setting, the best quality inks, and even then, it's never always, not always spot on. But then again, that can also apply to your computer screen, to your tablet, to your iPad, to your mobile phone. That you find that they also vary within the colours as well, from one device to another. So, you know, then you have to question yourself, well, which is the right colour then? <laughs> to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> as long as you've got something that looks similar, you know, that looks, looks realistic enough, because obviously colours do change with different camera settings as well. So when the photographer, which is uh, Amy Lewis, by the way, on Flickr, thank you, Amy Lewis, for taking this photograph. I should have mentioned it earlier, um, which is giving me permission to use. Um, when you're taking um, a photograph, and... The subject can vary you know, drastically within different lights, can't they? And that would also apply to whatever I'm painting from, so you just take it for granted it's about right. Unless it's somebody's pet commission, then you have to make sure that it's, uh, the colours are as they are in the photo. Now, remember that rope idea I was talking about just on the inside of this eye? So I'm barely grazing, there's hardly any paint on this paper, on this brush now, on the paper, on the brush. And because of that, I can really put the finest of marks. I mean, you'll see, I'll just add it to here. This is how fine these marks are. Let's see that. Let's see if we can zoom that a little bit more for you all as well, if I can. So, Maria, you use a tablet. Thank you. So, if I just go a little bit closer up, is that a bit better for you? There you go. Yeah, I think that's better, isn't it? That'll do. Okay, how long have we been on for? 31 minutes? What have been talking about for 31 minutes? I've got no idea. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit more around there. And then back to the cerulean blue. Just pop in a tiny amount in there. Let it dry off. And then once that's dried, I'll do the same again with the rope marks. And I think all we need to do then, just put a little bit in there, actually, I think, is add some white highlights within the eye as well. Just really fine tune this now a little bit more. Look. Okay, right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to have a quick slurp of coffee. And while I'm drinking the coffee, I'm going to play you a short little video on what we're doing on Patreon. So bear with me, because after we play this video, I'm going to show you how I use the watercolor white and how I add that into these little highlights for this eye to kind of bring that extra life to this otter, even before we've obviously painted the nose all the fur. All right, so stand by, I'll be back very shortly. And this is what's coming up on my Patreon channel in January and February 2020, how to paint five realistic looking birds. So the first bird we'll be painting is going to be the Gold Crest. Now the Gold Crest is a beautiful little bird, the smallest bird in the UK. But we're going to go through all the wet and wet washes, the fine details over the top, painting realistic feet, adding watercolour white and also painting wood. Now bearing in mind you also get a full PDF tutorial on how to paint this bird as well within that same month, so you must join on that same month. The second one we're going to be working on for the second week of January is going to be working on the Goldfinch. Now the Goldfinch is a beautiful bird with that red face, but it's the European version of the Goldfinch. Again working with layers into a realistic form. Then we're going to be working on a cute little blue tit. Now the blue tit is so so tiny, it's a lovely little bird. But I'm going to show you how to paint this step by step, right from the basic wet and wet wash layers, all the way through to the fine details over the top, creating a feeling of form and obviously a realistic feel. Then we're going to add the branch and all the fine details to the branch at the same time, working with all the details along the way. After that one, then we're going to work on a beautiful little wren. I'm going to show you how to paint that very tiny little detailed eye as well, and a strong looking beak. 
We'll start with the wet in wet washes, all the detail over the top, and we're going to add layers upon layers of detail to create that form and the realistic feel to this tiny little wren. Once we've added the white, we're going to work with wet in wet washes and scumbling techniques to add the branch. Then finally, the fifth bird will be the robin. Such a beautiful bird we know with that classic red chest as well. So once again, we're going to work on the eye, a strong looking beak, adding the fine details over the top, even down to the lifting off techniques as well. Painting those delicate little feet. We'll also be using watercolor white and then thinking about that very solid and detailed looking wood. So if you fancy having a go at painting five realistic looking birds, come and join me on Patreon between January and February 2020 and we'll make a start on painting these beautiful little birds. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye for now. Okay, well there you go. Thank you for watching that. Are you all still here? Yeah, of course you are. I hope so. What do you mean, where have you gone? <laughs> right, okay, where was I? Nicely refreshed with a nice cup of coffee as well. Hey, very good. Now then, I want to make sure I get everything right within this eye. So I'm going to put a few small rope marks, rope curls, just around the inside of that kind of outer eye ring there, it's the lower eyelid. And I think, yeah, it's not far off, and that's about probably about right there. Okay, now then, watercolor white. Are you ready for this? Now, as I mentioned, I tend to use one which is opaque in color. Okay, well, it's white, I know, in color, but it's opaque. So, basically, what that is, it's going to cover much better. You can use white gouache as well, which is um, traditionally naturally an opaque medium, anyway, isn't it? Um, so, you can use white gouache or opaque white. As I mentioned, don't get one that's semi transparent or semi opaque or anything like that because you find that um, you find it won't cover and it won't give you the highlights that you need. So I only want a little bit in there, but you can re-wet this, don't forget. So you don't matter if you over put too much in there in one go. You can get the white as half pans as well. But I prefer to use the tube version because it's uh, much creamier, much thicker, and it's harder to kind of get a creamy consistency when you're working with, uh, with a half pan white. Okay, so I'm just going to very lightly tie a little bit of water there, look just underneath and drag it into that white paint and then just give it a roll and pull away now what I tell my patrons on Patreon which is just at the top there is all they got to do is load it okay roll it pull away and then very lightly on some very clean tissue <coughs> okay dab it once or twice once will probably be enough in this case and by doing so what that will give you is a very fine tip on your brush, as long as you've got a fine brush to begin with, you get a very fine tip on there. Now I'm looking at the shape of this, so I'm going to go very lightly on the outside edge of the highlight. Again, my eyes are flicking back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, like a broken record. Now, backward and forward to the reference photo, just to make sure that I can see exactly what I need to paint. A little more around there. Just to get a bit of sparkle, which is what we need for this within the eye. Uh, I'm trying to see where that goes down there. And if you add too much, you can tint the white as well. But you have to wait for it to dry, and when you do, when it is dry, and you do add colour over the top, you add that colour in one fell swoop. Okay, so in just one go. If you don't, you start blurring that white paint. Which, um, as I say, once you start blurring the paint, it goes like a little mud pit, and you'll start all over again. <laughs> so you lift it off, and uh, you can kind of redo it. But uh, so you have to be very gentle with it. Don't overdo it. I'm just using a damp, clean brush just to soften down the inside edge of that white area. It's got a nice tapered feel as it comes in towards the eye. And I may add, I may add a little bit more around there, and put some blue over the top. Yeah, just about there, I think. Bring a tiny, fine mark coming down on the inside of the eye. And probably just tidy up this inside edge there as well. Okay. Now that's dried already, so I'm going to just very lightly touch it with a little bit of cerulean blue. 
there's hardly anything on the brush so let's get a little bit more but again you don't want to overload the brush even when you're adding color over the top just dab it tap it and that I dare say is plenty on there I'm trying to see as it because the inside of the eyes got a bit of a it's got a bit of a, a lizard crimson in there I think you know so it's going to get a little bit of a lizard crimson into one corner to give us a purple hue bit of a purple color there so it's really very similar to ultramarine violet really so just very lightly and watery as well just add this in I'm going to tap it in just the inside edge so we can change the values a little bit change the flavor there you go that's very technical isn't it? let's change the flavor of it and there you go so other than like a few little tiny tiny into into little tweaks we can more or less call the eye just about finished so i'm going to do the same on the other eye now let's see how we get on now if anybody's got some questions please ask hello nicole hello looking amazing so far good to have you on board thank you very much for being here and watching thank you it's very kind of you Ooh. right okay calm down paul calm down behave yourself lad right okay so more watercolor white a little bit more and I'm gonna go for this highlight now now people do ask me sometimes why don't you um, reserve the white of the paper as you would do if you're in your traditional watercolor style well I'm, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not a traditional watercolorist you know I paint the way I want to paint and uh, I'm quite happy the way I tend to paint and it works for me and that's my attitude really with all of this is that if it works for you then that's the right way to paint okay if you're comfortable in the way you're painting then that's fine that's not a problem at all you know then that's the way that you want to paint don't get me wrong you need to test yourself and try different ideas out as well because um, if you don't test your um, abilities out and try something new it's like me painting water I don't often paint water but you know I've done that on this one as you can see so you have to try something new every now and then as well and just really give it a go and see how you get on you know and if you don't feel comfortable doing it don't worry just go ahead and give it a go don't try not to think about it too much because the more you think about something the more we can put you off actually doing it can't it I know I know I've been there still am sometimes as well you know, when I come to a painting uh, say for example I've spent the whole week editing videos for, for Patreon and I get back to the to the uh, to the board, start painting again. I feel nervous. You know, forty plus years of painting, I still feel nervous when I'm about to start a new painting. I know, mad, absolutely mad. So when you're feeling nervous, when you feel as if it's not quite working out, and you're oh, I'm scared of this, and you know, I get in the same position as well as you do. I honestly do, and you can see that now. So it's nothing new to be expected and I think it's a good thing as well actually because it really makes you think and try harder to get things just about right and that's how I tend to paint and I've painted like that all my life and I'm 51 now and I started when I was um, 11 actually 11 years old when I started painting all them years ago not that long ago is it really no of course not okay so I'm gonna just go for a little bit more dark in there now just to pick out some of these finer areas now this is just a simple layer of paint on this one isn't it it's not as if I layered it like a cat's eye because you know if you're painting a cat's eye which I've painted quite a few over the years they tend to get very very detailed so many different marks and you know textures within the eye which are softened down fantastic uh, eyes to kind of practice on as well cat's eyes um, and also a horse, horse's eye as well. I tend to paint them sometimes and they are so, so detailed. But with something like an otter, I mean, that's not a detailed eye, but it will do, just about. Now, I do want to extend this highlight along a little bit more there. Let's have a quick look. Um, I still agree with you. There are no rules in art. We make it our way. We certainly do, Nicole. Now Nicole's a good teacher as well, she's very good, so if anybody wants to check out Nicole, you're more than welcome to, after you've watched me of course. <laughs> um, just to soften this down, just a little bit more down there. How long have we been on for? Let's have a quick look. 44 minutes? Oh, hecky thump. Oh, there you go, I'm going to have to go, have to go in a bit. Now when I've finished on here, I'm going to have a quick break for 10 minutes or so. And then I may go live and continue with this on my Facebook channel. 
So a Facebook page, devonartist.co.uk, no it's not. Devon Artist on Facebook, I'll put the link down below for you any second in a minute. Hang on, I'll bear with me. I should go back to the software I'm using at the moment. So, let's have a quick look. Uh, oh yeah, there it is, look. So, when you look at the YouTube one, we've got that one. So the Facebook one, facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist Paul. There you go. So you find me on there on that particular one. And there's one of the ones for Instagram. Can you follow it? Paul, keep it still. Keep it keep it still. Okay, there you go. So there you go. So you've got the Instagram one down below as well. So you find me on that. But if you go to that Facebook one there, uh, devonartist.co.uk. Uh, so devonartist.com. I keep saying it wrong. That's my website, isn't it? Facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist Paul. There you go. Get it right, Paul. Okay. Ready? Gone. Right. There we are. Right. I'll stop uh, blabbering on. Just do a little bit more. Just complete this with you. Then I'm going to go with them. Now, underneath the eyes, we've got some very fine marks. I'm going to start off with a lighter colour. First of all, I am going to put a body wash on this before I go on to Facebook as well. I'll do that off camera. Only because of time, really, and I've got to work out the colours first, which I like to do. Just kind of work out what the colours are going to be before I put them all on there. And do a lot of planning before, and then so all these kind of test sheets I've got here. Look, got loads of them, kind of knocking about, which I tend to use. I mean, these are just for this painting alone, really. Now, when I'm working from a reference photo, so this is from um, an excellent photographer on Flickr called Amy Lewis. Amy Lewis is a good wildlife photography she's really very clever and she's allowed me to use this particular photo but it's quite large as well which means I can really kind of pinch into it on the on the tablet uh, or iPad whatever you're using and you can see all the finer details inside there so when you're working on something like this and you're working on all these little tiny details you really got to think about how dark it's going to be and you know have you got it the right size is it the right shape so you need a really good reference photograph to kind of work from I'm sure you all realise what it's like when you've got a photograph you want to do for a commission or something like that, and that reference photograph is quite small, it's blurry, it's taken indoors, they've used a flash for the photograph, you know, and it's very difficult to kind of even see, even see the details of in the eye or the nostril. <laughs> so you know what I mean though, so you, it's very difficult to see those details, so that having a really good photograph is really good advantage, it really is. Okay, a little bit more around this one. So this is just that first layer, really. Just kind of give us some feeling of how it's going to look. Now I'm looking at the direction these go in. Now again, I'm referring to the clock face, as I mentioned before. So now I'm going down towards probably 8 o'clock. Is it that late already? Then down towards about 7 o'clock, then back to 8 o'clock. Can't make up his mind. And towards probably, yeah, half past 8. There you go. And then back down to 7 o'clock. Oh, we're going back in time now. And I'm feeling probably 11 o'clock towards the top of the head, top of the eye, just there. So that's how I'm looking at this when I'm starting to add these layers on. Already, this is starting to come to life a little bit more. The eyes look completely separate at the moment, but they'll all sink in when I get all that darker detail on the outside of these eyes. So, you don't want to say now, don't you? I'm going to go in a minute. So I'm going to say goodbye, farewell, and don't forget, I'll bring you back up again. I'm going to be live on Facebook uh, very soon. There it is again, look there for you. I'll put it so you can see it. So remember the Facebook one, www.facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist Paul, and you find me on there within the next 10, 15 minutes or so. So hang around there, and I should pop up on your screen when I'm live. Um, so until that, I'm going to just make sure I'll leave it on the screen there. There's no other comments. No, I think we're all right. So again, thank you for watching. So remember one last thing as well. Click on that subscribe button down below as a thank you for me doing this to you today and chatting away to you. And when you do click on the subscribe button, also click on that bell icon so that you get notified every time that I uh, go live or even put a post here or a new video here on YouTube. Okay? So until next time, I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, one last thing, just keep the bushes wet. Okay? Bye for now. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. Now stay tuned and I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to get from being here on Patreon on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. Let's get stuck in.
So when I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go for a variety of different subjects, from dogs, cats, from large right down to little tiny uh, creatures as well. And I guide you through this, as I say, step by step all the way from the beginning right to the final brush strokes. For the $10 tier, you have to get access to the entire back catalogue from over two and a half years of video content and tuition. So all of that will keep you painting for many months to come. Now bearing in mind as well with these video tutorials, I do release a brand new one every single month. So every month we get a new subject to work on, but you still got access to all the back catalogues I mentioned, which means you can paint at your own leisure. So all I mean by that is that you don't have to get that project done that particular month. You can go back two years ago, for example, and work from one of our projects from then, then come back and then work on this one another time. There's no rush, there's no panic, and you can paint at your own leisure and at your own speed. You'll also gain access to all the shorter video tutorials as well. So these are all the short ones such as painting a feather, working on, say for example, a hare's eye, working on fur, and many other subjects which I'm putting on here as well. I also provide the outline drawing and the reference photograph which go alongside the main videos which we have on here plus the shorter videos as well. So you can simply print these off and use them for your paintings. Now each month I write a PDF document which includes all the reference photos as well. Now this PDF document will go alongside that current month's main video project so you can use it instead of or alongside of, it's entirely your choice. But also you gain access to the PDF document for every single month that you are a member. So ideal for those times, you don't want to sit by the computer whilst you're trying to paint. Now one of the things I do provide is my companion page. Now all this simply is, is all the links to everything that we have on Patreon on my personal website. So the idea is all our shorter video tutorials are on here, so the $5 tiers and above. The $10 tier levels and above are the main big large videos. So you can choose whatever you want to have a go at, okay, from here. The idea of this companion page is that when you click on, say, for example, scroll through to see what you fancy, say, for example, the tiger, you click on the tiger tutorial, that'll take you back to Patreon itself with everything to do with the tiger videos. So that'll give you the outline drawing, the reference photograph, and all the part numbers to do with the tiger. So it's really handy to go through that and have a look what you're fancying. One thing I'd recommend with this companion page as well is to bookmark it on your browser. All right, so save it so you can access it really quickly to choose whatever you want to have a go at painting. Not forgetting as well, I produce quite a lot of tips and tricks videos for you to go through and also about videos to do with materials that we use here and ideas, questions, that kind of thing. So have a look on my special companion website to go with Patreon and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now if you're a Facebook user, I've also created a special closed Facebook group for my members as well. So this is a place really where we tend to discuss other things or questions and answers to do with Patreon and some of the tutorials which we work on. So you can do that either here on Patreon itself or on our Facebook group. Now I'm actually adding a third video in every month as well. So if you're on the $10 level, you get access to the main long video project which could be three or four hours long. You'll also get access to the $5 tier level project as well, which is another video project, which is used as something to do with like painting a dog's nose or very small projects, which you can work on if you haven't got a lot of painting time. But additional to all of that, I'm also going to be working on a few little botanical items as well, just so you can add these as extra kind of embellishments within your main project paintings. So you're not going to get one, you're not going to get two, but you're going to get three video projects to work on every single month. And remember, you'd have to do it that particular month anyway. You can do it six months down the line. It doesn't really make any difference. And all at your own leisure. Now, as for joining, have a look for the different tier levels from the $5, $10, the $20 level, and the $30 level. And you see there's different benefits with different ones. Right, so there you go. That'll give us some ideas what Patreon is all about and what you would learn through being here on my Patreon channel. As you know, there's a massive catalogue now of things that you can learn from. And uh, don't forget, you get the outline drawing, the reference photo, everything else for you to kind of get stuck in straight away. So if you find this is exactly what you want to learn on how to paint wildlife in watercolour, then click on join now, choose a level that you want to subscribe to and make a start.